Hey everyone, this is Paul with a demo exclusively for all of our SQL Skills Insiders. This demo goes along with our March newsletter. What I want to talk to you about is a, an option in Restore that I don't think a lot of people know about. And it's called the Restart option. So what I'm going to do first of all is I want to kick off a, a backup to show you how long it's going to take without having to use Restart. I'm going to turn on some trace flags. This one here, 3004 gives information about what's happening with uh, zero initialization, and I've specifically turned off the instant file initialization feature. This one here turns on information from the backup system, about, sorry, the restore system about what, what's happening re with restore, and this one just says, give me a bunch of information, instead of going to the error log, send some of it to my console. I'm still gonna have to look at the error log though, so I'm gonna cycle my error log to make sure it's nice and clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and restore this database now and you'll see how long it's going to take. Now the restart option is usually used by people that are doing backups to tape and when they restore from tape if they're restoring from multiple tapes then and something gets interrupted using the restart option means that you don't have to start from the very first tape. The backup system writes out a, a kind of checkpoint file every so often as it's going along into the um, backup directory for your particular instance and if you do with restart, the restore system will look at the checkpoint file and figure out how far through the restore it's got, and you'll only have to continue from that point rather than having to go back and, and start. Very, very useful if you're looking at a, a very large database that you're recording, that you're restoring. So our database restored, it took about 25 seconds. It's not a huge database. So we can see all this information that was given to us by the restore system, telling us all the different phases that it's going through, um, what it's doing, so on and so on. Now, if we go and look in the error log, we'll also see some stuff here. We can see the zero initialization taking place. So you can see these lines here, zeroing out the data file, zeroing out the log file, and it completed. So now let's try doing a restore again and interrupting it. So first off, I'm going to drop my database. And let's try starting off a restore. But after a few seconds, I'm just going to kill it. So what we can see is it started doing stuff and it actually said, I stopped in the middle of doing file initialization, so I'm not going to be able to continue. So it obviously didn't complete. Now, at this point, there is no checkpoint file. If we go and look in the directory where checkpoints get put in the backup directory, there's no checkpoint file because restore didn't progress far enough to be able to continue from where it left off. So the restore writes out checkpoint files at various points. For instance, it writes out a checkpoint file when it's created the files. It writes out a checkpoint file for every um, part of a media set that it restores. That's where the tape stuff comes in. It writes out a checkpoint when it's finished doing all the copying. It writes out a checkpoint when it's finished doing the redo portion of the crash recovery that has to happen at the end of a restore. So even though this is primarily designed for restoring from tape, it can actually be very useful restoring from disks as well. If you have a very large database that you're restoring and it gets interrupted, for instance, after the files have been created and initialized, but before the copy is finished, or for instance, before after the copy is finished, but before you finish doing the crash recovery portion, you can restart from where you left off and potentially save many hours of downtime. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and redo my restore. Now I interrupted it last time. I'm going to redo my restore and I'm going to watch for a checkpoint file being created. And I'm going to kill the restore after a checkpoint file has been created. So we go ahead and do that. So the restore is continuing. So I'm going to be watching here and what's going to happen is the checkpoint file is going to get created right now. I'm going to stop it. Okay, so I've killed my, my restore, but the checkpoint file has been created there. So what it's done so far is you can see it's what's called preparing the containers. So it's started to do the zero initialization of my files. Remember, I turned off instant file initialization. It's finished doing that, and so it's written out the checkpoint saying, okay, everything's ready to start copying. It started to do the copy, but then I killed it. So if I do a restore with restart, it will not have to do the zero initialization. I will skip that step. And we'll, we'll, we'll watch that happening. I'm gonna cycle my error log again, 
and then I'm going to do a restore and use the with restart option. And then when it's finished, we'll look in the error log and we'll see that it didn't go ahead and do the zero initialization. It was able to skip that step. Now remember my initial restore took 25 seconds. So if I go ahead and do this, it's going to skip doing the zero initialization and it'll probably take about 11 or 12 seconds and it's only doing the copying. There we go. So everything was already ready. It did the copy of all the pages over and it was done. Now, if we have a look in the error log, what we're seeing is it didn't have to do the zeroing of the data file. It was already done. Okay. Finished off doing a tiny bit of zeroing for the, the log file and basically did the copy and that was it. So we were able to save a whole bunch of time there using the restart option. So if you're doing a very large restore and you have to interrupt it for any particular um, reason, have a look in the this backup directory and see if there's a checkpoint file. And if there is, then you can make use of the restart option. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the SQL Skills Insider community. Next month, we'll have another cool tip for you.